Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm doing some, uh, answering some questions, doing some things, trying to get you to loosen up and lighten up and give you lots of stuff to practice. Um, I have been working here and filming a lot of my uh, classes and stuff, and this one, some of these paintings here, this is one we did, but some of the other ones that are back there, um, I did for my PR 101 um, class, which is Mastering Roses. And I just wanted to show you this one here. I just love this type of painting here. This is called Brush Marks. This is a total different way, and I haven't shown you on the channel at all, how to paint like this. Totally different way of painting. Uh, it comes from the 19th century Fresh Impressionist painting. Um, and uh, it's a lot of fun, but it has a lot of power to it. So for gallery painting and stuff like that, it, it really is good. But let's go in and I'm going to challenge you to paint large, large brush and uh, try to twist and turn and edge and everything in your brush to get it to do different things. We're doing some of these techniques in some of our floral classes quite a bit different. Um, and you want to try, and this is something I do with all my students, you want to try to to paint something as large as, or as small as possible with as large a brush as possible so that you have to, you learn to break your habits with your brush of turning, twisting, and all that kind of stuff. So, or, or stroke work. So here's a board here. This one is an 11 by 11 inch board. I made the uh, background here with some of uh, this blue. This is a sapphire blue. And uh, you could add a little green and a little violet to it just to help tone it down, gray it down. It's a pretty color. Uh, so for my colors out here, this is what I've been working with today. I just put out the sapphire. This is uh, a Hansa yellow, uh, Darulite yellow, yellow oxide, naphthol red light, uh, burnt sienna, pine green, thalo blue, sapphire blue. And I probably won't use the thalo blue. Might, but who knows. The quinacridone uh, uh, violet, the red violet, and white. Okay, and let's go in, and one of the things I want to do is I want to push in some blue. So I had a, a couple of questions here. Can you paint a blue rose? Well, yes, you can paint a blue rose. They don't sell very well for me. I mean, th there are existence. It's more of a blue, blue, violet uh, type of rose. Um, but, you know, for me, I go off of a lot of the old styles, and that's when I started was older styles of painting. And um, the blue rose just doesn't have a very good, uh, I want to say, it doesn't have a very good symbolism with it as far as history. So, and blue is my favorite color. Of all colors, blue is my favorite color. I love it. But I can add blue colors into the rose. I just don't paint a blue rose. But I'll show you how to do some of that fun stuff. Let's take a little bit of violet with that. And we're going to, I'm just adding a little extender here just to create this real pretty colors. You get some of the violet going here, this quinacridone violet. Let's push some of that in. So we'll get some blues and some violets going here. Let's take some of our pine green and burnt sienna They'll push the warm right up against the cools, and I like that. We'll push those right into these areas, right in here, like that. I love to try, and you know, I've said this to you in quite a few videos. I I love to play with color. This is one of the things I do in the after I've finished a lot of my day of work. Matter of fact, I've been painting and filming all day for my classes, and. Um, this is one of the things I like to sit down, use up some of the paint on my palette, and try. So now I'm going to cool it down. Try some different color combinations. I'm going to cool it down. A little red violet and a um, little green. And I just try some things. And you only get to really see it if I work, if it works. <laughs> no, no I, I actually, I, I will show it. And I'll tell you if it doesn't work. But... Uh, um, you know, I start out with kind of an idea. Here we're going to go with some blues. We're going to paint a large uh, one brush rose kind of thing and soften them out. And we'll put some blue flowers, violet flowers in with it. But I love these splashes of color that will go. And so, and work them back and forth. And a good Ala Prima painter, contemporary Ala Prima painter, would go back and forth like that to push those colors in like that. Get rid of that just a bit. Push in some of that power so you might repeat a, a, some of your other colors back in there. So you get a nice, good color movement that sets the foundation of what you want to do. So let's come in here. Let's take some of these nice violets, some of these together. Just makes a nice gray. Add a little bit of that red. That makes it beautiful. It warms it up just a touch. But we'll keep it slightly, slightly, slightly blue. 
let's just push in and let's keep the rows a little bit smaller here so we can and we'll try to paint it here with our uh, three quarter inch brush and our finger can't paint without my finger thank goodness the heritage paints I work with are completely non-toxic so I don't have to worry about anything so I'll just push that in here I'm going to add extender to my painting today. You don't see me add too much of that because I want to, if I'm going to paint large brush, I want to do a lot of pushing with my finger. So I'm going to keep the paint a little bit wet. That's my uh, dogs there uh, waking up. They're probably going to want to go outside <laughs> here in a minute. Um, let's come in and let's pull in. Just have some fun, you know, and painting should be fun. Uh, and I know, you know, a lot of you write to me and you get and a lot of you posting and stuff on the academies and stuff. It gets frustrating. I understand that. There's certain parts about it that just get really, really frustrating. I know. I've spent my whole life trying to do this. And But you know what? It's fun. It's, it's you know, it's not the end of the world if you can't paint a rose right away. And, and, but you, you can't. It just takes time. You know, you've got to have the determination to get time, you know, to do it and uh, to paint it and they will you know that you will if you have a, a nice fun attitude about it and as long as painting stays fun you'll grow and you'll do great stuff so uh, to the outside edges here i start to look at look at that i just got some nice light marks out there i'll start to look and watch those edges how much of those edges do i want to break or keep and as i come up front here now i want to put in like a warmth and this is where I'll try. I'll, I'll try. Well, what's, you know, you think, okay, I'm going to go warm. So you think, okay, you have my yellows. But let's use some color theory here. If I'm going to go warm and I have a lot of blue, what's the opposite of blue? Orange, the complement. So if I want to get a, a real soft orange here, would actually, as a nice warm, let's put just a touch of these brighter yellows in there. This will actually be very pretty because it's a complement of the blue I have going there. And look at the, the, the pretty. I mean, and it's different. And some people will like it. Some people won't like it. I like it. And so it's my painting, so that's okay. I'm going to push that around a bit. Push that. And I'm going to, you know, pick up a little edge, almost like a petal edging technique with a three-quarter inch brush. And this three-quarter inch brush causes you to have to plan your working a little bit more. And, you know, use your, you can use small little, or what we call touches or marks of color. And, uh, you know, to small little edges and stuff like that. So you do small, quick little strikes with the chisel of it to, to help develop some things. And some nice movements and stuff. And... So, you know, you you got to kind of plan it a little bit. Now, you know, notice here in painting this, I haven't put the center in. Normally, a, a lot of times I put the center in. I only put the center in, uh, you know, it's, it's not something I put in right away all the time. Because sometimes I kind of understand where I'm going to go with the rose. See, here I'm going to darken it down and push just a little bit more. Just a little. I want a nice, what we call transitional petal there. Now, now is when I may want to start to see that center. And let's go right into some, let's cool down our orange. Let's take some orange and some uh, of that red violet together. And we'll push that in. Yeah, that might be kind of nice. Let's lighten that up walk right out here with a little bit of that light and just walk that right out push some of that in there now we'll just push that right in my background's getting a little bit sticky it's uh hot it was a hot 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 day here today it's supposed to be 103 tomorrow the the um was um i think they said it was uh, 96 today so it was pretty hot right now I have the air conditioning off so you don't hear it going on in this building but now we'll just push in a little bit of soft light just drag it ever so lightly there to posit a little bit of color just on the corner of the brush push it let's head out to a softer gray kind of color over here so it's and just put in the impressions of your 
rows here. Maybe the impression of your bowl a little bit more. Sometimes I do it with the the, the dark. Sometimes with the light. Sometimes I want to see it, you know, more of the dark back in there. I'll push that back in. I vary it quite a bit. I um, I like that. I like that orange too. I think I'm going to go a little bit more right up in here. Vary that orange. Just lightly brush it through. My color is very wet, thick up there in the front, so I have to lighten up my pressure. So this is one good thing, guys, for, you know, uh, trying to paint everything with a huge brush. Is it hard? Oh, yeah. It is really hard. And But, you know, we do, we do exercises, okay? We do exercises to practice and refine and, I want to say, is... Um, really to build our techniques. And you don't paint anything because it's easy. You paint something because it's hard. I develop exercises for my students and my online classes to make them hard, to force you to practice. And uh, that you grow that way. If, you, if I constantly give you something you can do, you don't grow, see? So we want you to grow. So now I'll take some of that orange, just thin it out a little bit, put it into the back, loosen up the back edge of my of my rose. Now does this look like I've painted it with a big huge brush? Let's get some of that nice light color. The law of disproportionate color from color theory. As the color gets lighter, the area in which it occupies gets smaller. We'll push down. We'll curve in some of these nice little petals right in there. Maybe just a little idea of them. Let's push some of that orange right around, right in through there like that. Just lift off, just zoom. And we'll reset that light up in the front there because I zoom too much. So we'll pull that back. It's got to be fun. This is, it's, you know, for me, this is just a blast. It's filming all day and then coming out and just using up some of my paint on my palette. And I'll paint several boards like this taking the dogs out for a walk first though but I'll paint several boards like this that uh, I'll set up and sell you know set up to uh, sell and stuff and use up my paint and I like to do that it's just good practice for me too so I kind of like that that look of that when I want to get a bit more of that blue our goal was to get a bit of that bluish color into the back so let's just take some light blue gray and introduce that right up next to that on this back side back here right up into that push let some of that gray right up into that uh, nice warm front now you know you can soften it out by uh, using larger strokes then they'll make your rows look softer or go smaller ones and like I'm doing here and making it look kind of fluffy I like fluffy roses. Let's take a bit of the warm in that and just come right around this edge. Let's close up just a bit here. There we go. That's kind of a pretty little rose. Just a little different. Now we could open it back up with some dark if we want there, but that's kind of kind of a nice. I can come out here and push a few little edges. I could do some negative painting. Not so easy with a three-quarter inch brush, but we could. Let's come over here and let's do a couple minute rows right out over here, pointing up this way, maybe right here. Let's take some of that red, red violet, push that right in. Boom, 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 boom. Now that we've got a handle on this, I'll start to speed up a bit, put a bit of the blue in. I'd love to paint fast because then it gets more casual and I like it more. Once I set the look with my queen, my big one, let's put the light in here. Boom, that might be too light, but kind of like that. Push that in. Let's set, matter of fact, let's do this. Let's push back this with some gray. Push it back. And let's weave, what we call weaving petals, set the light one of this one right onto that one. This one might end up being more the queen, or they might end up fighting each other for position. <laughs> yeah, both works. Boom. Good. Let's get some of that nice warmth 
in there though. Boom, get some of that. And so see, I'm turning and edging and using the corners and stuff of my brush here. And you can see you can't find as, you know, some of you write to me and say, well, your roses look so stiff. Well, that's because you use a combination of the same stroke always. And that and when you're constantly repeating that motion, that's when they get stiff. So, you know, try. You don't have to spend your whole life doing a whole bunch of big roses. But try a few big roses and they'll change on you. It'll change because you'll have to you'll learn how to use your brush a little differently. Let's put just a bit more light. Boom, right out there. That's kind of good on that edge. Maybe a edge petal right there. Push that in. There, that's kind of nice. There's a nice look there. That's kind of a flat line there. That's okay. I am a professional. I'll fix it. We'll push some color and blur that back edge and if I need to I'll use what I showed you in the last rose correction video of negative painting to fix it up right we can do that there there we go nice blurry put a little bit of the blue some of this nice soft little movement back there let's get it a little bit warmer a few little marks just a corner of the brush moving through there like that Set in some of that nice movement. Let's get that touch warmer in there. There. Matches that other rose a bit more. Or we can take some of that cool and touch some of that back into this one. If we kind of like that, I kind of like that cooler color in there. A little extender. Thin color out here. Just kind of whisper some edges on here like that. That's kind of pretty. That's just a real quick casual little rose here let's um, take some blues and some whites nice soft blue and light here some of the let some of the grays and stuff come up here and let's just boom 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 just tap around try to make a blossom with a three-quarter inch brush that will um, that will challenge you here Let's put a bit of violet into that too. So what I do is I go to small stabbing little marks and I'm planting the, my marks here as, I, as I'm painting that, see? And that's a good exercise of learning how to try to figure out how to get that brush in there and do that. And that will break your habits of, you know, using the, the brush the same way all the time. This is, I, I try to tell that to my students and stuff. You know, this is what I like you to do. And uh, let's just add some quick little marks out through here. Those of you in the rose class, you know what those are called. There, we'll push those around. And create here. Create a few more little bits let's create a you kind of learn how to use the the back of this or the chisel edge there to create these little blossoms so i just little marks just boom little shapes here yeah figuring out how to shift that brush in there just just get it in there just push it in there get that that look in there with that and um yeah, that worked back there with that one. Let's get them more towards a violet here. And lighten this up. And push a few little violets. Let's push some of that violet in there. That's kind of a pretty color. So I start to paint for color as well here. Some nice pretty colors. Boom, boom, boom. Some lights. You don't have to make tons of perfect blossoms right now you know and matter of fact if you do a lot of like these little violets those are pretty coming over showing up onto the uh, cool side shadow side of your rose as well those are pretty sitting out over there a little bit of that violet color 
it could go if I'm going to go up to the bowl like that it has to go a little lighter I always call it the moonlight good color theory there we go just like that and uh, I'm gonna break up start right up here now with some of my take some Hansa some greens a little bit of burnt sienna in it to it make some various greens here let's get it a bit more green that's a little warm here but you know Thinking about it, you know, orange, toned orange, like burnt sienna type leaves would be pretty in here too, because that, that hit, see, like, look at that burnt sienna with those violets, you know, that's kind of a pretty color, color combination, that heads more towards a complement to it, so, and they, that is kind of pretty to push a little bit of that around, some of that burnt sienna and stuff around in there, it's kind of a, pretty little color get that warm cool going I'm constantly thinking all the time of warm cools twist and use push your brush use different corners put out little marks let's go in with some nice cool deep pine green and red violet that's your coolest deepest darkest tone that creates your good contrast here right into that center of interest right there where we want to have that. Let's push a little negative painting right over here. We'll push the rose right into that so that we get a little bit of translucency there on that side. Makes it look like you know what you're doing. There. Let's push just a bit of that right around here. See, I like to, you know, follow along with like the, you know, what a, a porcelain painter will do. I did those techniques for quite a while and that's how they would create and push that rose forward with the negative. Let's push a bit of that green out there like that. That's really kind of pretty. And yeah, painting big brush, boy. It's challenging but it's uh, really kind of fun. Let's grab some of that. Put some Darulite in with that violet and that uh, uh, green and that takes it over just a little bit more towards a real toned orange which is kind of pretty there with that and let's take some of this blue and this light this is going to tone it down because I left some of that orangey color in my brush and let's just maybe a, a little bit of a spark of lighter color here but let's just push this around down here more and just let the colors just go so we don't compete too much here with everything else we got going on. We'll let it just back down here. Let's get some of this violet in it and the blue. And uh, we'll just let some of this just be pretty colors. So we got some nice looking roses. We don't have to make perfect everything. You know, you, you can just uh, give some ideas, like these are going to be little flowers and stuff like that out here. And they're just fading away, pushing it out, building that color and fading away. It doesn't need to always be stuff, but it is a little full down in there, so that's where I'll take some negative painting, push back, push some greens back in again, pushing back some of those other colors maybe you know the ones we just pushed on there maybe push that back there that little negative painting sets that that rose on that side let's take a lighter yellow green here I'm thinking stem here and push some I like stems I like the power and the movement of the stems so I do like to see them a bit here. And that's kind of a good color. We'll make it a little more green, a little dark light yellow and some green here. Pine green and some white. We'll push in just some big leaves right there. Nice green. Let's push another one here. See, just I don't pay any attention to what I did there earlier. I just go right over it. 
because if you pay too much attention to it, it'll look like that and you'll stiffen up your painting. So just kind of push the next the next part in. Oop. Now see that real gray there? I'm going to rinse that out of my brush. I hit went right from the green to the white to the red violet by mistake there. So I want to have a cooler, clearer color so it doesn't go gray like that. And I can use that to reset the shadow there on those greens of these leaves. Here, like that, just using the corner of the brush. Here, just using the corner and just kind of Follow that just a bit. Let's brighten that up. Lighten that up. Put a stroke of more bright light. Right there. Maybe a uh, mark or two of some other. So you see all that, that mark back there just kind of settled down. Let's take a slightly lighter not quite that straight, Dave. I like the vein lines and leaves. They just add that extra little bit of movement there. There we go. And I like modeling the greens, changing the greens up so they're always a little bit different. Put a little burnt sienna and yellow. Daryllite yellow is a pretty color. Push a bit of that into some of these colors. See, that's a real pretty um, color up against that blue as well. You're heading into those complements. There, like that. That's just a bit stiff down here, so I'm just going to soften that in. And uh, maybe even just Pull some green burnt sienna down through there to loosen that up a bit more. Maybe a bit of violet down through there. Just loosen up that color a bit right in there. That stem was just a bit too straight, I think. Just a few little ideas. Boom, 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 boom. Here. Here we go. Remember my, I, I've told this to a lot of my classes, but my long-term friend and mentor, he, um, uh, he died so young, 58, but he, I painted with him for years, 18 years, and he taught me a lot of things. And I remember him once, student always, always like, how long does it take you to paint that? How long does it take you to paint that? And he, one of his answers one time was, it took two hours and 28 years. It was 28 years of experience to be able to do it in two hours. Basically, it's 28 years of experience to learn how to stop painting. <laughs> you know, that's what it is. Okay, let's take a bit of that burnt sienna. Let's just drop it into a few centers there. Just the ideas of those. And just the corner of the brush. Let's go into the corner of the brush with some yellow oxide. We'll touch that right up on one side. Lift the pressure and just get out of there. Got a little texture dragging on the corner there. You'll get nice centers there, though, when you use a big brush like this because, you know, it's it's too big. Then, so you can't go in there and make a repetitive stroke. It's just too big. So you lay it off, and it just happens. Whatever happens, happens. So there you go there. Let's take a little Hansa, and let's just tap a small little light of Hansa. That's the most interesting one there, so we'll tap that one a little bit onto that one, just a little bit onto the others to say you did it, and uh, yeah, and it's nice, soft. You can go back and put in any kind of edging or anything, like there might be a few ed er other areas that you might want to, like here, to say, yeah, maybe I'll bring out the edge of this little uh, leaf right there brings in a, a different kind of emotion, uh, you know, a different kind of a, a look to the painting. Bring out this little light to a leaf right there. Um, do you want to add any more out here to these guys? That's kind of up to you. Um, maybe uh, I'll drop down one more time 
little green, real little light, and like create just like one more little drop down leaf there, and then get out. That's that's kind of enough. You know, I could, I could take some of this violet, these greens, all these colors together, and just kind of swirl around back in here, push that around, and just give the impression I, I love painting I call these ghosts ghost roses I love painting the impressionistic ghost roses take a bit of our softer orange pink color for the center there just a bit and a touch of the violet not too much because you don't want to get too much contrast just a touch back there for the coolness and let's just take this, dirty it up, and a touch lighter. Remember, you're painting the, what I call the ghost. This is, you just need a, a bit of the coloring in here to say there's a rose. You don't need too much going on there. We want it to disappear. So, and that's what I like. I like that to choom, fade off there and disappear. All right. There's a quick painting. Three quarter inch brush, push, corner, pull, drag, pirouette, do all kinds of fun. So I had to figure out how to get it in there with the three quarter inch brush. The fusion brush is a great brush to do that because it's so soft and you can push to distort it to get a different type of look. But um, this will help you from keeping your roses from uh, getting too, um, too, let's say, uh, becoming too stiff or repetitive strokes. I did something here that's not really great. So I, they almost, they should override a little bit. This is what I call formal, formality of the design into the rose. And so I'll do that. And Tom A, you know all about that because that's something I, we've worked on with her for several years because he has this thing, roses shouldn't touch each other right? And so it's kind of fun. We all have little habits, little things. That's why I love teaching. We're all, you know, we, we all have all of these little habits and uh, they're, it's kind of fun. So there we go. I'm not going to play with that anymore. That's a good painting there. So it overrides just a bit and that's a good painting. Okay, here you go. That's a fun one. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Oh, don't forget to hit that like button down there and Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet, okay? We appreciate that. And don't forget to go over to JansenArtStudio.com and, you know, sign up on our our newsletters there because we're starting next week. It starts up with, um, you know, our new painting series, Come Paint With Me. And we only no we're only notifying... Uh, the people on it's a it's a free whole thing. There's five teachers. I'm joining together with four of the teachers, and uh, we're only notifying through the manifest when a when a new video and stuff comes up to that. So you don't want to miss anything on there. And that's all we do with that mailing list. It, you don't sign it. You're not signing up for anything else. You could, there's other newsletters you can sign up for, but to, um, you know if you just sign up for the one there, then you can. Um, uh, You'll get just notified. We just notify you when something's new that goes up, okay? Because we don't use it. We don't sell it. It doesn't go anywhere else. It's just, it's just us, okay? All right. I'll see you guys on the next one.